according to a Chinese proverb, if you want happiness for an hour, take a nap. If you want happiness for a day, go fishing. If you want happiness for a lifetime, help someone else. Logic tells us nobody really cares if we are miserable, so we might as well be happy. However, most of us would rather be certain we are miserable than risk being happy. People who should know what they talk about tell us that happiness depends upon ourselves and that real happiness costs nothing. Yet, we are ready to pay for its counterfeit, ready to pay for fake happiness. In this video, we will talk about two main reasons why we can become unhappy. The problem with unhappiness is that it can make us worry, and worrying can make us even more unhappy. The first reason we can be unhappy is summarized very nicely by the economist and entrepreneur Nathaniel Vare, as caused by the gap between our expectations and our reality. Indeed, many of us can easily become unhappy when our expectations of reality is more than our experience of reality. According to Nathaniel Vare, there are three different types of expectation gaps. The first is the imagination gap, when we imagine and demand and expect more than reality can provide. We look at ourselves in the mirror and we are disappointed because we do not look like George Clooney or Taylor Swift. Advertisers learned long ago that if you can make people hate themselves, you can sell them anything. The second gap which makes us unhappy, Nathaniel Vare calls the interpersonal gap, where we compare our reality to the reality of others. We judge ourselves based on what we experience around us. So, for example, if you are a millionaire and live in a very poor neighborhood, you will feel rich. But if you are a millionaire and all your neighbors are billionaires, you can feel poor, unhappy and even miserable. The third gap is the intertemporal gap. This is when we can become unhappy because our past reality is better than our present reality. Because we are always comparing our present to our past, if we are not constantly improving ourselves, if we are not constantly exceeding expectations, if we are not constantly moving forward, we can easily begin to feel unhappy. For example, if our business made $10 million profits last year, but we will only make $9 million profits this year, we can feel unhappy. In the book, Think Forward to Thrive, the psychologist Janice Wilhauer takes the whole concept of expectation even further. She explains that our biggest obstacle to achieving what we want to make us happy is that we act based on what we expect, not on what we want. For example, we want to win the lottery, but we never buy a ticket because we do not expect to win. We want that dream job, but we never apply for it because we do not expect to be selected. We want that dream relationship, but we never ask or make any moves because we expect to be rejected. We want to lose weight, but we do nothing because we do not expect to succeed. Indeed, it would seem that what we expect and what we want can be completely different. When we do not act on what we want, we take ourselves out of the game. Certainly, buying the lottery ticket does not guarantee winning, but not buying it guarantees losing, if, of course, that is what you wanted. So, there is something that we probably want in our lives today, but because we do not expect to get it, we hold ourselves back and worry. The advice is very simple. We should start to act based on what we want, even when our minds tell us 
to expect to fail. The second reason we can be unhappy is linked to how each of us understand happiness for ourselves. True happiness is something that should be independent from people and circumstances and comes from within or from inside us. So if the reason you feel happy today is because you went shopping, you went to see that long-awaited movie at the cinema, or you received a big gift or present, then your happiness is not a stable happiness because it depended on other people and the circumstances. And because we cannot always control everyone else and all the circumstances, if you cannot go tomorrow shopping, you may not be happy if that is your source of happiness. The challenge is to develop long-term and sustainable happiness from the inside, not from the outside. And we can only do this when we experience love, patience, compassion. For example, when we help others and are useful to ourselves and the community. The Buddhist nun, Jen Kelzang Niyema, summarized her take on happiness and the causes of unhappiness during a TED talk in Greenville. She stated that happiness and unhappiness are states of mind and therefore their causes cannot be found outside the mind. She went on to elaborate that happiness exists inside every one of us. The problem is we keep searching for it outside. There are at least three implications or takeaways from these statements. If we want stable happiness, we should search in our minds for it. We must stop blaming others for our unhappiness. We must stop demanding from others to make us happy. The very big takeaway here is that it is not what is happening around us that is making us happy or unhappy. It is really how we are responding to those things. It would seem that the best strategy is to try to develop a stable mind as quickly as possible because only a stable mind is truly stable from all the influences of external circumstances and people. Also because only a stable mind can achieve a positive state of mind, which you will need in order to properly cultivate that lasting peace of mind, that mind that does not need to worry anymore. The mental action of meditation is said to be one of the many ways to achieve a stable mind. In conclusion, when we are born, no one told us that it was going to be our job to find happiness. Nobody told us it will be our job to do all the crap we will need to do so we can become everything we are supposed to become. Yes, we cannot control the world and all the circumstances, but we can at least try to control our own reactions to them. Whatever you do, may it make you happy.